into the loop. Watch, because this is cool. I'm going to do it this way. Into the loop. Lock, lock together. Watch. Okay. So you lock in. Even though you're stuck with a problem in school, with Jesus helping help you get a, you, you can't seem to do it on your own. But with Jesus help, you can get walk through the problem. You can get through the problem. I told my niece and nephews that. That helped them to do good in school. This is my version of Crazy Man's Handcuffs. You go in like this, and you hold it right here, and you let it go, stay in between the fingers. Then you go underneath, and then let go of the metal, and it zips around. It took me two weeks to get real smooth. I was watching Copper Building, Floating Building Special, and his hand, he didn't do anything. But his hand, he went like that for a split second. So, on the sixth time, when I saw it, I said, what if I did this? And then go under, then come around. And then Tommy said, how'd you, Tommy told you, how'd you do that? Well, Jesus helped me figure it out. This is when we had VCR videotapes. We had VCR recorders. And then and later on we got DVD recorders. Then we take what we have and dubbed it on to a blank DVD or DVD disc. Now we have SD cards. I don't know. What's next? Record on a laser. Anyway, um We got we went from megabyte to gigabytes. Now we got terabytes. I don't know what's after that. Laser bytes? I don't know. Here we go. See, you come down. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to teach everybody this. Once I figure, Jesus helped me figure this out. And even on the Great Wall of China, eight annual specials that I have also, they, he, he's teaching the Chinese girl how to do it. But, and it seems like it's the one way I'm doing it. He used sticker rubber bands for the Great Wall of China. But for the imploding building, explosive encounter, he used thinner rubber bands. You go into the loop. They say, want to see it, want to see it again? They go, yeah, got not a hundred. It was being sarcastic because he just borrowed uh, Eric's one dollar bill. And I mean, a hundred dollar bill and changed to a one dollar bill. And then he did, did it again. He said, if I did this reverse, I wouldn't have to do shows. Anyway, then he made Made, then give it back to Eric. Anyway, made sure it got back to Eric. He was saying, it's a 50, it's a 20. Oh, he dropped it on the floor. Don't trust that man. Eric, you got it? Yeah, big hand for Eric. Anyway. I have nothing against the people on YouTube that show how to do it. I think I found one YouTube channel that does it like me, but I haven't found anybody else. They do it like this, but I'm so used to doing it the way I learned with Jesus' help. They do it like this, they go, they lay it on the middle finger, and then they and they hide it behind the hand 
and then they take the, like, see I'm so used to doing it my way, it's hard to do it their way. You go like this, and then hide it, and then do it. And I know that Copperfield does no hiding. He just does it just like that. No hiding. It's just right in front of everybody's eyes. And I'm pretty much sure that's how he does it. You could send eight to nine dollars for the secret, but I didn't do that. You just help me figure it out. And I got a you know, truck one of the magic and book and Mark Orson course book or video. I mean he, I got the book too but it doesn't have it in there, but in the bit the, the video, they all show it the way that most people do on YouTube. So let me know my way is way different than anyone has done. My version is to put it in between the fingers. Don't lay it on the middle. Just lay it in the middle. And then grab it under there. And then let go and it up around. See, you take it here. I'm trying to teach this the best that I can with you help. See, you take your finger, pinch it so that it won't go and it will stay there. And you go underneath the tunnel. And then let go of your middle finger and rub for effect. So here's how it looks to the audience. When you do it in fast motion, even this close, the kids, that, the, the junior boys and teen boys, always want me to do this illusion. They say, Bill, can you do that rubber band trick to show my friends? I just brought them to church. I want them to see this trick. Okay. It's good that they brought their kids, to, their friends to church to hear the word of God. But they also wanted to show them that hey, Bill can do magic tricks. Eric Rainwater always plugs me too. He was a teenager we watched grow up, and we we looked we looked at him as a good example as a, a Christian follower of Christ. He's now a pastor. I think it's called Happy Kick Baptist Church or something like that. Currituck Baptist Church. Anyway, he's on Facebook. Look up Eric Ray Eric Rainwater. He comes to a good news once in a while and say, Hey, hey y'all. Hey, he points to me. Did you know the build of the magic tricks? And they go, Yeah. I say, Eric, yeah, they know. Although it's good that he does that, because there might be some teenagers that don't know it, but I hadn't had a chance to do any tricks. Je Jacob Bassinet opened up the door for me. He saw me solving a Rubik's Cube, and he was like, Did you just, how'd you do that? And I was like, finally I got someone that got attention, because in the 1980s, I could, any team would be, I could get their attention easy. But they're now against the team today, but there's so much in their cell phones that an elephant could be in the church and they wouldn't even know it. But Jacob Bassinet did. And then everybody else started looking and it was like, wait a minute. Did he just change a one to a five? Did he just poke a pen through a quarter? And I'm glad that Jacob Bassinet is golden key to, to let the teens know that hey if you want some entertainment and fun along with the Planet of Salvation message you could learn a tool of magic tricks and you could use it as a tool Jacob is a quick learner I, I taught him a rubber band trick and he caught on because I was teaching him this trick where you pull down and go like this and then 
have to double this because this is a thick, a larger one. And then where you put this inside here, and and then put it in the middle, and then when you lift up, say that's blue, that's your red, or whatever color, two different colors there is. And you say what? They magically change places. And right after church, he said, Bill, huh? And he went, he went like this, he went like that. I was like, good. You're a quick learner, that's great, Jacob, that's good. Jacob Bassinet is a quick learner. I bet he gets good grades in school. Take a bassinet. Um, Ian Seepster. Uh, Isaiah. I can't remember his last name. Isaiah. Brandon and Landon Tarkadon. Um, Ronnie Zillman. Then Ronnie Zud. Judd. J U D D. I had to ask him because I didn't know his last name. I said G, J, J, and he said J, U, D, D. Oh, Ronnie Judd, okay. And I said, so the first I said, Jacob, what's your last name? Bassinet, oh, okay, all right, I got it. Like, David Bassinet, okay. And then I asked Ronnie, what's your last name? Judd, I didn't quite get it, but he said it's, I said G, Judd, Judd, and he said, J-U-D-D. -D. Oh, okay, I got it. All right, thanks, Ronnie. Bob Scobie was telling me how he, show me how to do a, the magician's thumb tip to make a cigarette vanish. He, he, he modified his version so he could, as teenagers, when he was growing up, as a motocross biker, he, they could hear that tsh, and then he would act, do acting like, ooh, it burns, all that. Bob was really good at sleight of hand. He read books on Bill Tarr. Now you see it, now you don't. One and two. Uh, he stuck up those books. I got the Emerson Magician's Handbook by him. Henry Hay, the soft cover. I've seen the soft cover in the library. This, the library, the hard cover's got a little bit more in it, but but luckily we got the new soft cover on the Mark Wilson, and then I looked at that because I know David Duncan had a hard cover, so I know it's the same. But when you had a soft cover with a pocket kind, you put it in your pocket. Mark Wilson goes in, pour some at it. It's smaller, and it's only half of what's in the bigger one. And I got the video volumes. Somewhere I got to Jeff McBride how to produce cards and how to make them last longer with a vice grip and use magicians' fanning powder you can buy at the magic shop. I think it's best to do that because nowadays if you do Johnson's baby powder and all that stuff, that it'll kill you if you hear the TV commercials lately or look on YouTube about it. But anyway... Like God says, when he, that when he gets come back, the water will not be drinkable, the food not edible, the virus and plagues. And as Pastor Mike Asher says, and Pastor Coles, this virus is not going anywhere. It keeps multiplying. And and Cloud Ten Pictures, Cloud Ten Pictures dot com says we made Left Behind series. And all the stuff we said in that movie and now it's becoming a reality. It's a Christian movie site. So they go by the Bible. So they're trying to stress that what God said is true. All this stuff that's happening now, if you read the Bible, you could see it all, all unfolding. I mean, we got surveillance cameras even on top of traffic lines. Do you need to talk in the bathroom? No, I don't need to talk in the bathroom. Do you need to videotape yourself in a new episode? 
very fine. Same bat time, same bat channel as Bob Schofield says. Do you need to go in the episode room and do a Rubik's Cube trick in the bathroom? <laughs> no. Folks, I'm asking him if he needs to go to the bathroom. Does he? No. Same episode? Yeah, very funny. And you pull pranks there. A fake bug through your door window because your bedroom is right next to it. Or that Mickey Mouse spring thing. Or go, achoo! And then I jump or slide a church bulletin underneath there. You're funny. Banshee have that skeleton right here. I come in and I, I see a skeleton sitting right on my on my bed or a big cockroach or or a big cockroach on my storyteller of the Bible um, boulder that blue that Pastor Asher um, bought for everyone and made copies. Table Saul makes copies for Pastor Nathaniel Brown and his lessons and all that. Dr. Yahoo, I'm sure, the same concept with, with his writings in it. He does the main service and then the fellowship hall, Pastor Nathaniel Brown, and the grief share thing, people who lost loved ones. Uh, John Radice does that over on towards the kitchen section. We first were at the kitchen section, but we had a lot more people than expected, so we moved over to the middle one, and then they took the kitchen area. And children's church is over by the fireplace where he does just where he does the Dutch children's church over that way. Same bad time, same bad channel. I got all the other Batman movies that I already seen in the play in the movie theater. Okay. Look at this. You still got all the other. Since he brought up Rubik's Cube. Oh. Da, da, da. There was one kid a long time ago in a church outing. Had yeah, good news. He could do all the patterns, but he couldn't solve the cube. But I bet with practice, I bet he could. Whoops, I made a wrong turn. Let's see, there, go that way. This is a Rubik's, on a Rubik's Cube, Speed Cube. Okay, checkerboard. See checkerboard. And then, see Jesus is going to make a new heaven. It's going to be shaped like a cube. And it's guarded on all sides with angels. Alright. And Pastor at, at Mike Asher said there'll be filters so nobody can catch a cold. Alright. See this goes with that. Okay, that's four boxes for two sides done. Then if I do it again, I'll get a four four crosses plus two checkerboards. See, I'm going so fast I don't even know if it's picking it up. I don't even know if I'm going, if it's showing up. I'm showing the cube or not. Go to the wood, come back down. Anyway. I make like the symbol of the fish. See the fish? Then I just go, it looks like it's mixed all around. And I just go back the other way. 
that um this all it's already really mix it up. You know, it's really nice and okay. it doesn't matter which what color I pick, I got to do the in it. So, the experts, they can know what has more done than others so they can get done quicker. They got eagle eyes. Okay. What are they going to do? What are they going to do? Okay, the center is all working. See, there's the blue and the yellow and the red, okay. Now I'm looking for the red, right there. That's right. Now I'm looking for the other one that's on the bottom. Yep, I got it. See, it's on the bottom, so I got to turn it so it's away. Bring it over, bring what I did up, then bring it over, then slide it so that it'll go up. See now, it's to its center column. Now I'm looking for the... Let's see, this is the red I'm looking for. Look at a red green. Red, no, red yellow. Oh, red on my face. It was at the top and I had to bring it down to bring it up. Okay, see I do the corners and then the middle. Everyone else does the nose of the cross and then the nose. Okay. Although so this one guy actually does it the way I do it. And I think he said he's in the guinea book. But at the guinea book, whatever, that, that's an incredible TV show. It's on the roof. It was cute the best. You know, there's one guy who saw the roof with two of his in two minutes flat. So that means he gets on the roof with two in one minute. The Stephen Brundage can solve the Rubik's Cube in 15 seconds. Time has changed. I knew when the Erno Rubik's Cube started bringing the Rubik's Cube back out. Because it started the craze in the 1980s. And then, the year, then when he brought it back in the year 2000 something, I was thinking, I don't know where he's got some of his sleeve. He's trying to get the new generation to learn how to do the Rubik's Cube. He's probably got new puzzles, and I was right. Not only did they learn to solve it, they learned to solve it faster. Even more moves with one hand. And then invent new ways for magic tricks. Alright. Doug Henny did the Rubik's Cube in a magic way. Called the Chant and Chanted Cube, even though it said on a Rubik's Cube, but it had the word Chant and Chanted Cube and magic, magic Shots. Craig Pitty talks about it all on his YouTube channel. The Magic TV, I think it's what it's called. And his son Ryan is on there sometimes too, and other magicians. And Ryan's got his own YouTube channel too, called the Kid Magician. Look up Ryan and the Kid Magician. Ryan and Patty. Maddie Trick, the Kid Magician. Okay. It's good to the sister starting to learn magic tricks too. Like David Blaine, his daughter, is starting to learn magic tricks. And so is a couple of those children. His son and two daughters, Audrey and Sky, and his son, um, Dalton, Dalton, or something like that. I need to look that up again. Dayton, maybe it's Dayton. Anyway, he, um, somewhere he named himself David Carpenter Jr. Carpo takes them to the magic shop so they can watch the pros in action and semi-pros and, and amateurs and they'll get the sparker to, to do magic tricks too. Just like his father, their father, David said, cook, yeah. All right. 
and her mom Chloe does fashion wear. Okay, see that goes over that way. This goes over this way. I would have done had this done, but I'm rambling, rambling as usual. Okay, I know this goes over. Everything is called land. See, I'm sitting there doing this. I don't even know if it's if I'm staying without it going past the camera because I'm just trying to solve it. check the middles because I might be in the middle or it might be at the top if it's not done yet but maybe it's on the bottom but it's important to look okay now we got all this done my dad Marcel could learn this top I taught him how to do this part in the middle and Cheryl the same thing my sister Cheryl but when I started doing pattern at the bottom, they said, Bill, you lost strength. But later on, Cheryl learned how to sew the whole thing. Larry Maples, Bobby Maples, Marie Maples, Joanne Maples. I forgot their mom's name, but anyway. They, their dad, Larry Maples, taught Cheryl how to do the, sew the whole thing. And we get up to this part. Anyway, it goes. Let's see. Okay, that's where it needs to be. These two go to the place. Uh oh. Just notice I'm, I don't got this middle done. Okay, there. Glad I just noticed that. Okay, now it's all done, all the way around. That's done, that's done, that's done. Okay, now let's put it, see that's there, and that's there. These two gotta switch places. So bring it down, bring it up, do that once, come back down, do twice. So now they're all in their positions. Now look for patterns. Oh, here it is. That way. Keep going in to uh, find. Okay, here's the saw pattern. For the corners. And sometimes the whole thing gets done all together. Okay, let me see what's this pattern. This is going to go over here. That's going to go over here. And that's going to go. So this pattern would be. which leaves these two, okay, once, 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 twice, once, 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 twice, 
เนี่ยเราก็ตีสองไอ้ used to have Tricky Ricky the bus ministry that that Bob bought me and some other uh, Christian magic tricks from Tricky Ricky's bus ministry he and Bob Schofield and Rusty Dillard, Ted Peterson, and others would go to a bus convention, and they saw Tricky Ricky. He did magic tricks, and he did use a black gospel message with it. And that's one pastor, one Mark, one Mac Palmer days. He used to come to our church and. He could buy some of his magic tricks and stuff. I asked, why did... This was when Pastor Ward Mike Palmer... I asked Ted and Bob Scoop, you know, Ted Peterson and Bob Scoop, what happened to Tricky Ricky? Well, he's doing the bus ministry, but he's not doing church, at least not our church anymore. Why? Well. As to Ward Mark Palmer, he came in. Yeah, I remember that. He, he was watching the magic that he was doing. Well, everything was fun and entertained the kids. But when he put on the song Cats in the Cradle, he'd, he had to leave because we're, our church don't have rock and roll or any kind of worldly music in the church. Yeah, that's true. But he was stressing that this reminds him of the days of his father, how they didn't communicate. It had a message behind it. And he said, well, it's good, but Pastor Wormack Palmer came in and didn't catch all that part. But you you were there, Bill. You saw the whole thing, so you know that he meant it in good, good faith. Anyway. So you gotta make sure you do Christian hymn music when you do our church for the Plan of Salvation message. Or a comedy skit is alright too. Like On to Treasure Island, like Howard Chapel did. And Mark Taylor as a pirate. Car Carnal Christian and all that stuff. And later on, Ken Hendrick, music director, did a, his version of, of the evil bad pirate on the Treasure Island. 